All right, let's see how we can add uh, information into our git config file. We're open up a terminal. And here we're going to just check what we have. So we don't see any git config file. That's okay. First thing we're going to do is open up a browser. We are going to go into um, the git official website. Now, um, this is also a great uh, resource to use if you don't know how to do uh, version control. We're going to go into documentation. We're going to use the git book. Uh, we are going to start from the beginning. So this is a great read. I will not go over this, but I highly recommend you actually give it a read. It explains a lot of the stuff we're going to be doing. It tells you even a little bit about the history of it. And some of the basics of how it actually works. Really cool stuff. It tells you about the hash, which we're going to see in a second. And the staging uh, states that it has. Also tells you how to install it. It's really easy, so I would probably skip this part. Let's go to the next one. Now, here's where we're gonna start off. Um, it's really easy. It usually um, has three. It usually has three. Um, I guess uh, different places where it's stored. We have the system level, which is the first one, which is gonna be in your uh, ETC folder. And then we have our global one, which is gonna be for us as users. That's the one we're gonna be working on today. And uh, the regular config file that's gonna be inside of a directory one once you start uh, using version control on a project so usually you only make a lot of changes to yours personally so the global one uh, sometimes depending but not at the beginning you really don't touch this one right here um, so yeah just let's move on so one of the first things we're going to do is just set up our name and our username. So let's go back. So as you see right now, there's no um, git config file here. But doing this will make one for us. Just doing git config. Set the flag global. And we're going to do user.name. Then we're going to put our name. And we're going to do the same thing. But for email. Then you can just put like whatever email you want. Uh, awesome. Now the next thing. We're gonna check our files again. And as you can see now, you can see that we have the git config file right now. We can always just see what it has there with cat. So that's already set up there. Um, you can also just go into it if you want. There we go. So the same thing, not much in there yet. Now let's continue. 
You can also set your editor. So for example here they're setting up Emacs. Um, you can set whichever one you like. So since we've been using Vim, I'm going to set mine to Vim. Now we can see it again. There we go. So Vim is set. Over here it also tells you how to check on it. What was it? Uh, yeah, so. With the list flag, <clears throat> you can see the same thing I was doing with uh, cat. So it's another way. Right, so you can also check on certain uh, variables that we have set already just by passing the name of it. Like git config, then uh, user.name. And it's gonna like spit out the um, variable that we put there. Also, something to uh, if you already read this, you'll know that, um, for example, where is it? Uh, each level overrides values in the previous level. So, if you're working on a directory and you have your config file there that's going to override any other configuration you have on your global and on your system uh, files. Likewise, if you're using uh, your global file and then you have some other settings on your system one, that just means it's going to be overriding it. Like it says here, you know, like your .git config is going to uh, trump those in etc, which is going to be the system, system one. So really easy setup right there just to get you going. Also another cool thing that you can do is just uh, if you're stuck in uh, a certain part during uh, Git, you can always ask for help, literally. Uh, another thing we're going to do is init a folder just to see what it does. So we can do like git help then init and it's going to tell you what it does. The options you have, the flags. It's really cool. So let's continue. Uh, let's see. You can do the same thing with men git which is just manual and then in it it does the same thing um, here it tells you you can also do it uh, in a way where you don't go into the entire file and it just shows you a couple of options get add and then the help flag it just shows you real quick what you can do with it Awesome, so that's pretty much it. I mean, it's really simple. We'll go over this uh, probably in the next video. But right now, what we want to do is just CD into documents. I'm going to make it directory. Uh, let's call it git. Let's go into it and do. So as we can see, we don't have anything there. So git init. And there we go, we initialize an empty git repository. Now we can go look at it. There it is. We can also go into it so you can see what it has. So there you go, you have your uh, branches folder, your config file, uh, description, the uh, hooks, info, 
objects. We'll go over that uh, later. But for now, you can see uh, you can see it's there by just making a file. Let's go with index.php. Use our template that we have already set up. As you can see right here, it says that we're on the master branch. This is the branch right here. And then we do another command, which is going to be git status. It's going to tell us on what branch we're at right here. We're on the master branch. We don't have uh, a commit yet. And these are the on track files. So remember the stages. That's uh, in the first chapter if you read it. It's going to tell you what this is, uh, where this file is at. So it even tells you how to add it. So usually if you're working with multiple files and you're doing some work, you're going to do git add and then the dot, which is going to be all the files. That way you don't have to type in each one. But if you're just trying to add a few or a select uh, group of files, you can always just add them manually. So we're going to do just uh, just that index.php to add it. I'm going to check again. See now it's uh, green instead of red, so it means it's uh, it's ready to be committed, and it tells you if you didn't want to uh, stage this file to commit, then you can unstage it just by doing this: git remove the flag cache and then the file name. Let's uh, try that: git remove cache. If I can spell it right. and then index.php now let's go again there we go so it has been taken out of the staging uh, state let's add it again there we go now we can commit it by doing git commit we want to pass it the m flag it's going to be just our message and we can just do initial commit there we go it tells you uh, we're at master branch initial commit one file change we added 27 basically uh, lines and we can see that by git log again here's the commit hash here's uh, what we set up earlier, my name and the email address. It even tells you the date it was uh, committed. It tells you the message right there. It's really useful. We'll see what it does later on. So yeah, I think that's just basically it. Just how to get started with Git.